On like the different frequencies that are present in a signal of any sort. Exactly. Yeah. Very good, very good. So in this signal, I'm showing that you know, I have all these frequencies present. present. <coughs> but how much I think the amount that they contribute or how much uh, how much weight they have depends on their value. Okay. Okay. So if you have a larger like value at some point, it means that at that frequency, I have this much of you know, value. And then if there is some, sometimes you have a really, really small value for G of F, it means that this frequency, the contribution is really, really small. Okay, so that's the interface. Right. So it shows the frequency component of the signal. Of what frequency do I have? How much of each frequency do I have? Right. <laughs> and then the other one we study several properties, very nice properties, quality, and then escape, time scale properties. If I multiply my signal by factor of A in time, what happens in the frequency domain is as if I just divide F by A, G of F over A, and then escape with this one, 1 over absolute value. Okay, so these are the things that. Uh, you need to have it ready. And then the interpretation is most also interesting. So it says if I, for example, compress a signal in the time, if my A is, let's say, 2, 3, if it's A is greater than 1, then when I say G of A, T, it means that I'm compressing things because I'm dividing everything by, by 1 over it. Okay, so that's what okay. I'm compressing the time. Conversion in time. Correspondingly, you have G, G of F divided by A. So in the frequency, it's expansion in the frequency. Expansion. Expansion in frequency. Okay. So you compress in the time, you expand in the frequency, and vice versa. You expand in the time, then you compress in the frequency. So that was reciprocal of each other. Whatever it is doing the time, then the inverse of that happens in the frequency. So we have some examples of doing the time. And uh, <coughs> this is for example. Here, for example, I expanded this pulse by a factor of two. Okay, I expanded in the time. So in the frequency, I compared it by a factor of two. <coughs> so, in other words, G of T is, if you have wider G in the time, then you will have a narrower 
spectrum in the frequency. So they are replacing and vice versa. So they are replacing the And then we saw some of numbers, and I guess <coughs> they stop here. Right. So time shifting property, if you already have seen time shifting property, that if I shift the signal into time by a value of T naught, okay? So if I have one signal, let's say this is my signal. This is my signal. <coughs> And then if I shift it by value of T naught, this is T minus T naught, I shift it in the time. So what happens to the frequency domain of free transform? I'm going to have the same G of F just multiplied by this exponential of F. In power of minus J 2 pi F T naught. T naught is the amount of exact amount of this shift. Okay, very good. So we can prove it, and we can prove it easy. Um, so let's go over the proof. So basically, I'm going to take the free transform of G of T minus T naught. Okay, go from the definition. So I'm going to make the signal, the same signal that I have here, times this exponential <coughs> e minus J2 by F T. And then <coughs> take this integral. <coughs> now, by now, probably we are familiar with this type of proof that we have. We usually have a change of variable. So here, just consider t minus t naught as a new variable x. Okay. So therefore, if you replace, you're going to get g of x. And whenever you see a t, you have to replace it with what? <coughs> if t minus t naught is x, T minus T naught is X, what is T? T is equal to X plus T naught, okay. So wherever you see T here, for example, here and here, you just replace it with X plus T naught, okay. And if you want to replace here, the D, D of T is equal to T of X plus T of T But T naught is a constant, so the T of T naught is zero. That's why you get exactly g of x here. That's great. So g of x that. So now just expand this e to the power of minus j t pi f x times e minus j t pi f t naught. Everybody agree? Right? e to the power of a plus t is equal a times t naught. Each power of a plus b is a minus. So now look at this. The variable is x. Do you see any x here? No. So you can easily take it out of the integral. The rest is the integral g of x e to the minus j by fx. Very good. That's something that we are familiar with and yes. This is nothing but just the Yes, so we have seen this if you had t. It doesn't matter, I mean, I can change all the variables to something, the name is, right? So instead of t, I have to see this. That's all. So the whole thing is g of x. So therefore, we concluded that the free transform of shifted signal is the free transform of original signal just multiplied by minus j to the power of t. Okay, and this is what actually we use it in the whole working quiz. <coughs> and I guess the proof is easy fun. I hope everybody is be able to. I don't expect you to prove this, but I expect you to can follow every step. Okay, so we did this. Okay, this is what happened. This is what happened. And every step you have to follow. Any question here? No? Okay, good. So the interpretation again. So that's the formula of so let me write it here. So therefore, if I have g of t and the free transform is g of f, 
So, if you compare the magnitude of these two, let's call this G1, G of T, and then call this G1 times G1. Okay. Uh, this G1. Call this G1, shift that way. So, therefore, this is G1F. And then, this is G1, so this is G1F. And this is F1. So this is the one of them is this and one of them is just multiplied by this. Now compare the margins of these two. How do you compare the margins of G1 and margins of G2? Like that. They're the same. Why? You said? Yeah. yeah. Why? There's no, there's the only difference in G2 is there's a phase shift. Exactly. The only difference between these two is this exponential term, each bar of J something, and I know that the magnitude of each bar of J something is always one. Always, for any term, right? So if I compare these two, the magnitude is this there. So what it says, it says if I shift the signal in the time, <coughs> I don't change the frequency component, and that somehow makes sense, right? If I, instead of having this pulse, if I have a pulse like that, oh, it's not, let me shift it to 10 seconds, okay? So the frequency component doesn't change, right? I mean, if I had, let's say, some sine, some double frequency, triple frequency, etc., I still have that. So the frequency component doesn't change. The only change is in the phase. Now, if you compare the phase of G1 and phase of G2, what's the difference? Phase of G2 is equal to phase of this plus phase of that. So phase of this plus phase. What's the phase of this? What's the phase of this? E, J, Z. What's the phase of E, J, Z? Right. So what's the phase of this? Whatever is next to J. <coughs> Minus <coughs> 2 by F to that way. Good. So therefore, when I shift the signal in the time, I don't change the frequency component. The only thing that I'm changing is basically the, the phase of the, this frequency component. Okay. And make that so I instead of having a sign lesser here, I have the sign here. So that sign also has been changed. The, the, that reflects in the face. Okay. Um, but now if you look at this phase, um, so just remember this. So the phase has been changed. So the amount of phase. Minus two pi f t naught. Is it a constant? Is it constant or is it like? Where is the frequency? Where is the frequency? So what it says? It says if I plot this, it says if I increase f. So it, so it's basically looks like that. It's a line versus f. And then the slope is negative, so it's, it's like that, like a phase shift. So as I increase the frequency, the amount of phase shift increases. Okay, so now how about this? Let's look at this example. Let's say I have a signal, G of T, which has these two frequency components. Okay. So I have a original signal. That some of the components that it has is this side, this frequency, and another side, this frequency. Now, if I shift the whole thing by value of t of t, t naught, if I shift the whole thing 
by TD. It means that I have to shift also this like value of TD and also this one with value of TD. But look at this. The TD for this one, if I shift it, how much is the amount of shift? High over two, because it's like quarter of the size. But for this one, which has higher frequency, if I shift it for the same amount, it's high. And if I had a higher frequency, the same amount of TD, the, the shift might be 2 pi, 3 pi, etc. That's why if you have a higher frequency, when you shift it, it is that you are shifting more and more cycles. That's why you have a linear plate shift of the frequency. As you increase F, the amount of shift is more. I hope it, this example makes it clear. Um, again, just look at these two. I shifted both of them maybe yeah, one second, two seconds. Okay, But one second for this lower frequency means amount of pi over two. But for this one, the amount of shift means pi. So in other words, this is omega, cosine of omega t. If I shift the whole thing by t, okay, um, if I shift the whole thing by t, that might affect like pi over 2, but for this one, this is the frequency twice that, the effect is pi, the same amount, okay. So that's the interpretation of this linear uh, phase shift, okay. And we say the linear phase is just the delay, so you may see this. So if you have a delay, as you say, if you just delay your signal, it corresponds to a linear phase shift. So a lot of times when you are designing a filter, um, it's, it's okay to have a linear phase because again, the linear phase is just a delay. So we can tolerate that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. I'm uh, just a little confused because yeah, that's fine. when you're looking at them like that, why have, why isn't the time lined up? Like like the, the pi should be lined up and then if one was like had a had a different period, uh -huh. then it would maybe in in pi for both of them, one would have more cycles than the other. Because right now I'm looking at it and if if you were to look at pi for both of them, it's actually exactly the same weight. Like why is why are you looking at pi pi it's the time axis. Why are you looking at pi over two on one, and that's corresponding with pi on another? Right. Does See, yes. Yeah, so, good question. I mean, for me also, it took me a few minutes to just digest this slide. But, um, see, I mean, when you have a, you, I will just start from this example. If I have a cosine like that, or I do have a signal like that, cosine of, what is that? This is a sign of omega. Now, if somebody tells you plot sine of omega t plus pi over 2. Okay. So, if the amount of the phase shift is pi over 2. Okay. So, if you plot that, you're going to see that actually it's like you are shifting this. Up here by like quarter of a second. The whole thing is a cycle, half a cycle, quarter of a cycle. If I shift this by quarter of a cycle, so this is final. You have to agree with that. Okay. This plot, math level. I mean, that's also, I guess, like, what is the sign of something plus pi over 2? Is this is uh, minus cosine. Okay. And this is minus cosine. So I, this is exactly as if I just shift these, because this is like that, right? Quarter to the, quarter of the period. Right, I, I understand. Okay. Now, I, I mean, for pi it's easier. If I shift it with pi, when I shift this with pi, it means that actually I'm shifting with one half of the cycle. So, do you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. Good. So now the same thing happens. I have shifted both signals with this T of T, let's say one second. 
But one second, for this one, it's quarter of a clear, so it corresponds to having cosine of omega plus pi over two. For this one, one second is half, so it corresponds to just pi. The other way that we can see it is. Yeah, okay, so I was thinking about the axis being like like pi or pi over 2. I was thinking about being in second. The axis <coughs> is t. This right, is pi. Right. Okay, so I shift the signal by amount of some dt. Okay, so basically this is like cosine of. This is cosine of omega naught. And then I've shifted <coughs> the amount of t so I get cosine of. Omega plus t, or minus t. Okay. However, that t d, um, sorry, omega t minus t. Okay, that's that's very important. So you have you shift everything by t d, <coughs> t minus seven times. So you get cosine of omega naught t minus omega naught t. And that's exactly what happens. So your in your phase depends on the omega. If you want, I can give you an example after the class. But um, again, if you agree with this, that if I add a pi, I don't understand. It actually looks to me that like both, both waves have the same frequency. No, they don't. This this two, the frequency. Because it's labeling at basically at, at pi, it's intersecting the axis again. And on the top graph at pi, it's also intersecting the graph. It looks like they're different, but then if you look at the actual value of where it's hitting the axis. Oh, so you don't agree pi, this, is, this is twice frequency of that one? That's why I'm, I'm asking because one it says, because I'm, I'm looking at the number, pi over two, and I'm looking at pi. Uh -huh. That's my question. <coughs> Yeah, this like pi is not, uh, this is, is not the time. That's the phase. This change. is the phase. Good question. The time is this TD. <coughs> this is phase. This just represents that if I amount, that this is half cycle is pi, but quarter of cycle is pi over two. This is not time. This is phase. Yeah, but looking at this, as you see, this is twice frequency. Right, okay. And for that, if it's twice frequency, but therefore if I look at one second of that, it's a pi, shift of the pi, but for one for this one, one second is pi over two. Okay. Yeah. And again, as I said, if you had even a let's say you had something that higher frequency, let's say you have a really, really high frequency, then one second for that one means a lot of cycles. And that might be 10 pi, for example. The phase, again, the frequency of the phase. Okay. So but really what this is showing is going back like a couple of slides. When you compress the frequency, you expand the time which makes sense, though, right? So if you take a look at the time scale while I plot, since the frequency is compressed up there, uh -huh. the time scale is up to the one per second. You expand the time to compress the frequency. Okay. Yeah, but this one mostly shows that uh, the amount of the basically delaying a signal for <coughs> some time, it has different effects in the phase of the signal. That's why we get this exponential <coughs> thing. This is, and this is a bunch of F. Again, the higher frequency, the more amount of the change in the phase. Again, I hope if you can say this. I mean, now I can resist this space. Yeah, yeah. yeah this space. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, so I, ju I just want you to take away from this slide one thing. Now, first of all, when I shift the signal, I'm changing <coughs> only the phase, and this is the formula. And the phase is varies linearly because, because of this. If I look at e to the power of minus j to the power of f naught, the phase is a linear function. Okay. And the linear phase is just a linear. So this is how it's called. Remember that it's good. 
the linear phase, if I have to do that here. Okay. And now we have a duality. The duality says instead of if, instead of shifting in the time, shift your spectrum in the frequency. What happens? So instead of g of f, I have g of f minus f naught. Okay, so now the shift is in the frequency. In the time, keep the g to the same by multiply by you know, exponential k. The only thing is that you don't have a negative here, and instead of t naught, you have f naught because now the shift is f naught. Okay, and then it's a function of t. Yeah. So very similar relationship, this is called the frequency shifting. And let's see the proof. So you want to find a better and smaller system, g to times e to the j to point of naught. Just go with the definition. This one, integral of that, gp of j times the usual the exponential term that we have used for minus j k times. T, okay. So now you have two exponential multiplied together, just add the exponents and z minus j to pi f t and then plus j pi j to pi f not t. Uh, factor t on both of them. So therefore you get this one. So you take t out, factor in the exponent is like that. Okay. So now upper rule come to the picture. We know g of f is integral of dt e minus j t pi f t dt, right? And this is f to the <coughs> Okay. Now if I replace this f by something else, the upper, what do I get? G of g of yeah, you have yeah, you have atom of <coughs> The whole thing is that this F. F, F. Now, instead of F, just put F minus F not, so you get that. Okay. So basically, prove that. To prove that if I take the filter and some of these, I just get the shift in the G of any questions? Yes. This would be visible in the frequency spectrum, right? And then in the time, time of the, the phase shift. Because they both start at the same order. Okay, so hold on. Yes, so now what it says, it says if you have, let's say, some g of t, and now if you multiply it by some exponential term, yeah, so changing the time. So what happens in the frequency if this was g of f, now you have g of <coughs> f minus f. So multipli multiplication by exponential term in the time is shift in the frequency. And actually this is the basis for a lot of communication systems we're going to see. That's why we call it the modulation property. Very nice to how it's related to the phase and stuff. Um, so before that, let's do also this. We just proved e, g t times is exponential. Now let's look at this. g t times and cosine. I'm sure everyone now knows the relation between cosine and exponential terms, right? <coughs> how can I write the cosine in terms of the exponential terms? Cosine of any angle, anything is equal to each part of A beta. A beta. A beta. Right. Right. Very good. So therefore, anything that we study for the exponential terms, we can expand, extend it to cosine and sine because of this very nice form. So now let's prove that one there for g t times cosine. And I guess this is the way. So the cosine is like this, right? Yeah. So instead of the cosine, just write um, each power of. So 
So I'm going to prove that so we want to integral to the end. So I'm going to write this exponential term. It's going to be the upper place of this. And if I change the sign to plus f, I have minus g is minus plus g. Instead of f, I put negative f. Instead of f not, I have negative f. What do I have here? So I have this one. Now I want to find out the g of t times cosine. Okay, I know that the cosine formula, so this is equal to basically g t times e to the power of j, the whole thing, t times plus t plus the minus j is divided by t. So this multiply so you get g t e plus j t minus plus t so I have half here and then half of g t minus j. Okay, take a pressure as well. I know the pressure as well of this. Gt times that exponential is g of f minus f1. So I know I have a half here, f minus f1. And then the first answer was that. GTE minus J equals F plus F. So I have a half here, F plus F. Okay, so I give you just one thing and maybe if you want to write it down and prove. This is the step, all the steps. So we already knew this. And then this is just F is negative F. So we knew basically these two, and we know the relation of the cosine and these two exponential terms. Let's multiply them, Let's take a free transform. Everybody got this? No, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, you are sorry. But did you, everybody understand it? <coughs> Okay, now let's do the sign. I mean, I don't just put it everything, but the sign is the only difference is that here, if I had sign, I had to put a negative here, and instead of j, I, instead of 2, I have 2j, right? That's the only difference. So therefore, I have a negative here, and then I have j. So when you take the first as well, you have to have two J here, two J here, and then you have the next one. That's the only difference. <coughs> you have a sign. You have a sign. <coughs> you have a signal by the sign. If you have a sign, because the sign <coughs> of theta is e power of j theta minus times one theta divided by two j. Modulated your G of T. Yes. Does G of T have to be periodic or can it just no. be? No. Okay. So let me just clear that. 
And again, this is the basic, this very simple formula that you just saw. This, this multiplying signal by cosine is shifting the free transform to the left and right by the amount of F naught divided by two. Okay, very, very nice and simple thing, right? So if I have a GT, let's say the free transform is this, this bell shape. If I multiply by cosine, okay, now I assume that we agree with that this is the GT times cosine. Okay, if I multiply by cosine function, what happens? Just take this one, shift it to the right by amount of F naught, and shift it to the left by amount of F naught. And then because of about half, if this is one here, you have half there. Okay? And this is called the basically modulation, modulating the signal. Um, so now let's look at this one. Why this is G times, GT times cosine? If this is GT and this is the cosine function, then I multiply them. Uh, what happens? See, cosine is oscillating, so when you multiply these, definitely you get the oscillation. But then what happens? Like at this point, cosine is one, so it multiplied by gt, so I exactly get this one, multiplied by gt, I get exactly this one. So the gt is like an envelope, and also here, yes, so you get a negative one times that, so you get negative of that. Okay. So like the gt and minus gt are like my envelope, and then my signal is oscillating. <coughs> So I definitely recommend you to go to the math lab and just plot this. Just assume you have uh, some arbitrary signal of g of t, and then just multiply by cosine, and you're going to see exactly what happens. Signal 
we don't do quantity now. Any part here is multiplied by some number. Yeah, so if I just multiply on one part, let's say this is the part and then this is the let's say cosine <coughs> one. Let's say this value is two and then this is three. So what happens? This is one, this is negative one. When you multiply, you exactly get two here. But what do you get here? You multiply this. Negative three. So it's like inverse of that. And in between, I mean any value you can have, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, and they're multiplying by cars, but here you have negative. So you, somehow you get this. And then if you look at the whole thing, you're gonna get like this. Because this is oscillating, going up and down. So therefore, this is the whole. This here is cosine of dt times cosine of omega. This is cosine of omega. So, so this is what happens in the time. I multiply my signal by cosine. This is what I get in the time. In the frequency, what happens? In the, what happens in the frequency the spectrum? So if for my g of t, the spectrum looks like this, let's say, yeah, free domain. Uh, for this one, g t times cosine is just a shift. Shift of this to the right by f dot, and shift to the left by f dot. And then it's the same part. And this is the basis of amplitude modulation. Maybe we have heard AM radius for some amplitude modulation. So basically, this is your signal, your original signal that you want to transmit. <coughs> but then you modulate it by a high frequency cosine. Okay. But this signal that you're sending, high frequency, has the information of your signal as its like envelope. Okay. So somehow you, the amplitude here is modulated by that signal. Okay, so we are going to have one chapter on this, AM modulation. But this is the basis of AM modulation. And then the frequency, the good thing is that you have, you shift this to the different frequency. And that's why, for example, if you go to your radio, for example, for AM or FM, so each channel or each uh, radio channel has a frequency. For example, FM, I don't know, 90.7, uh, I need to point something. So that means that this is called the carrier frequency. This is called the carrier frequency. The frequency that carries your signal is omega not here. Okay. And uh, okay, so based on that carrier frequency, your spectrum is shifting in different frequency. Now, if I multiply by different frequency, if one radio channel just finds one frequency and multiplies by its own corresponding frequency, send it over, and then another station finds another frequency, basically uses another frequency, and then maybe shifts the spectrum to somewhere else, 
and some other station somewhere else. And that's how we can share the spectrum or air, because air is common, right? I mean, now a lot of signals are going through. But the good thing is that they are, they are in different frequencies, so they don't collide. Okay, right. um, so this is a very, very important topic. That's fine. Yeah. It's just a scale. <coughs> yeah, you will. So, like, um, does that mean, you know, let's say you want to broadcast the. <laughs> so, like, let's take the zombie off the spectrum. And you want to, like, broadcast the, like, signal. So, how do you find, like, how do you determine the frequency that you're broadcasting? That way, it would be picked up by. Yeah, those are all uh, regulations, and um, like there's something called FCC, uh, Federal Communication Commission. So they just randomly assign you the frequency? Yeah, they sell you frequency, basically. Like, they sell you, like ATT, like all these mobile companies, like radio companies, etc. Uh, so they buy. They say, for example, okay, I'm gonna buy this spectrum from 900 megahertz to 980 megahertz. Okay. So AT and buys and pays a lot of money to that company to do to this federal thing FCC, and now nobody can use this spectrum. If you use this spectrum, it's gonna consider illegal. Okay, it's because they have paid and they have bought, uh, and then they can only use that spectrum. There are part of the spectrum which is free for everybody, 2.4 gigahertz. Okay, so you can build a wireless device and you can transmit in this signal no problem in this frequency. So all the Wi-Fi is in this frequency. Um, I assume uh, Bluetooth. Uh, yeah, Bluetooth is also that. There. What else? Um, I guess baby monitors. You know, they, the wireless transmit on that frequency. Even maybe the car garage opener. Um, that's also in that frequency. So this this frequency everybody can use for. Okay, nobody comes after me. Or if you send something here, definitely somebody will come. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, uh, and now, okay, now look at the sign. The sign is similar. You see the sign was just a negative and then to J. So still you have the shift G of F minus F naught, G of F plus F naught. The only difference is that you have 1 over 2j. So that 1 over 2j just appears in the phase, right? So that's why here, see, for this cosine, whatever you had the phase for g of f was ha had the same phase. But here, you see, there's a pi over 2 difference. And then pi over 2 here. Minus pi over 2, pi over 2. That's exactly because. For, for example, g of f minus f naught is multiplied by 1 over 2j. So the phase of this equals to basically the phase of 1 over 2j plus the phase of, let's say, gf or gf minus f naught. But what is the phase of this? 1 over 2j. Everyone can tell me? Phase of the numerator, which is 0 minus phase of denominator. 2j, what's the phase of that? 90 degree of pi over 2. So that's why you get minus pi over 2. Okay, similarly for the other one, you get pi over 2. So for the sign, the only difference is that you shift your spectrum, the magnitude is the same, but the phase is shifted by minus pi over 2 and pi over 2 because of that j. So you make a note here for yourself that the, this is the shift minus pi over 2 because of this 2j that you have here also. So one example, one more example. Let's say you have a pulse signal. So in the time you have a pulse, what's the free transform of that? Same. Pulse, same. They're always one. Okay, so I have 
h cos, and then this is the same. Now, if I multiply by this by cosine, okay, now look at this. If you multiply this by cosine, okay, so if I multiply this by cosine, this is the result. So the one, the time that g of t is one, we get one. But the time that g of t is negative one, we get negative one. But it's as if again, like I mentioned, it's the envelope as well. G of t and minus g of t. This is like the envelope. And this is the result. Okay. Um, so now what happens in the frequency is just shift this to the left and to the right. And then divide it by two. So therefore, the, this is the spectrum for the G T times So this pulse times the cosine, which is this, the spectrum is just two of those things shifted to the right. right. And by the way, this GT, because it's multiplied by pulse, this is like a, you get a cosine and just cut it, right? <coughs> because it's just multiplied by one. So you get, and then you throw away the rest, you just cut the cosine. <coughs> so what happens by cutting the cosine, you just, as if you just shift this thing to the left. So, and this is another technique in proof. We have a step post of property. Um, summation in the time equals to the summation in the frequency, multiplication by something in time, multiplication by certain amount in the frequency, the duality, time scale, time shift, frequency shift, uh, convolution. We are going to study this convolution, but this is also very nice. See, it says if you convert two signals in the time, what happens in the frequency is just a multiplication. Okay, so that makes a lot, I mean, things a lot of easy there because, you know, convolution is not usually very easy. Do you agree? Convolution is a hard operation. But multiplication is much easier. So a lot of time, instead of doing the convolution the time, so what we do, we convert this to the frequency, G of, I, can, I get the free transform of this, and then I get the free transform of that, and then multiply the free transform. Okay, so it's equivalent to this convolving in the time, which is much much harder. Okay, and the duality also tells me now if you're convolving the time, if you convolve in the frequency, you're going to have a multiplication in the time. So convolution in one way, multiplication in the other way. Very, very important property. And there are some other properties um, that you take derivatives of the signal, what happens in the frequency. Oh, good. So now more on the amplitude modulation. Here, probably see it better, much better. So again, this is our signal, g of t, and multiplied by the cosine. So I explained this. The cosine, the maximum is 1, and if the cosine is 1, what I get is exactly g of t. And if the cosine is negative one, so if my cosine is one, I get g of t. If cosine is negative one, I get minus g of t. That's why I have g of t as my envelope and minus g of t as my envelope. And at those points, I just touch this point, and between that, I oscillate. And you know that what happens to the spectrum. Any question here? No. When you did the modulation with the cosine and sine, uh -huh. the sine has the phase shift on the one side. Right. If you're going to receive that, would that make a difference in your receiver? Would that have to match? Um, yes. That's why I guess most of the time we do the cosine. Yes. For cosine, there's uh, um, no phase shift. But anyway, at the receiver, it's very actually very good question. So at the, the receiver and transistor should be synchronized in terms of phase. Okay? Because if there is a phase shift, you're going to have problems. We are going to see more of this in the next chapter. We are going to talk about that. Very good question.
Yeah, they have to be synchronized. They have to have the same. And that's standard then to be use the cosine to do it? Um, no, but they have to be synchronized at least. Yeah. Now, let's, instead of the cosine, just let's look at this shifted cosine to see what happens. That is, it's the same. I don't move it as much, I guess. Instead of cosine, just you have now cosine of something plus f. OK, so what happens is that we have a single shift, but then g of f minus f that is multiplied by this exponential term and this is multiplied by that exponential term. Anybody can prove this? Actually, it's very simple. Any volunteer to prove this? I proved that gt times cosine, what happens is that gt times cosine. So we just proved it, right? Cosine of, let's say, t pi f dot t, what happens is that the g of f minus f dot t of t of f plus f dot divided by t. And the only difference is that now I have cosine t pi f dot t plus some k, theta the pass that is shift. What do you think would be the approach to just pull this? Any idea? What was the approach there for the first time? Hmm? To use the Euler, x bar j, something. Remember this thing I said, I use this. And then I mean that it was not work. So what happens here? The only difference is that now the whole thing is this. Now I guess that this just like this part j. Now the whole thing. T pi f dot t right here, but now I have a theta like that. And then e minus j divided by that. So now how can I simplify that? E j t pi f dot t times e j theta like that. Okay. And then the other will also have a minus j divided by 2. So you get the idea. So you have this, this is going to give you the shift. This is a constant, each bar j. Everybody got it? You might see this in the exam. Okay, just pay attention. How do you come to? You just prove this. Instead of cosine, just use this Euler formula. Just move the shift into another one. Now, what if you only have a theta here? Right. What happens? It's just one plug of the J theta. Right? We didn't do that at home for the And you get that one. Very good. So, so a shift or phase shift here is just multiplied by an exponential term. So we can shift the phase of each spectrum component of a modulated signal by theta by using this type. So this guy is equal to theta now, which is the spectrum of all of these amounts. Okay, now the application of modulation, as I mentioned, that if you have three signals, let's say three stations, three radio stations, they just want to transmit, and they want to use the same medium, the air, they want to transmit. And this is the signal from station one, the question is station two. Um, obviously, if they, they send the signal in this frequency, at the same time, they're going to collide, right? But what we can do is just separate them in the frequency. So I multiply these by cosine with <coughs> f1, frequency of f1, carrier f1, multiply these by f2, <coughs> multiply these by f3. OK, now I send it at the same time, in the same place, etc. But the good thing is that they are separate in the frequency. Okay. So in other words, in the look at the time, what happens? Let's say this is the signal for low frequency. So in the time domain, let's say this is the signal of the station one. This is. Uh, Signal of extension T and something else. Something else is the signal of extension T. Okay. And in the air, you're going to be added, so you're going to get some mixture of that. 
so she cannot understand the author, right? So this is not a good Maybe this is a Okay. But what happens if I modulate it now? I modulate it, uh, the first one with some frequency, so I get this. And then the other one with another frequency. Turn on with another frequency, send it again. They are colliding the time. Nonsense. But now, if you look at the frequency, what happens? This one basically is in frequency one, this one is frequency two, this one is frequency three. So they are nicely separated. So nicely separated. So now in our radio, uh, what happens, we have a filter, if I want to listen to a station one, I, ch I change something and then there's a filter here and I just separate this signal and then I understand that. If I want to listen to this radio station, I change it and basically the filter is going to shift here and I'm going to keep this So you see they are nicely separated in the frequency, you can just put a filter and separate them. While in the time they are just colliding. Question. Well, one thing, so you have to pick the frequency for the like half bandwidth of each one, right? So there's no F overlap, or just find the origin of each one? Uh, I think. So, like, say you have frequency 100, and you have the other one frequency 100. You mean one. carrier frequencies? Yeah. Yes. So they have, would that still, like, separate them with the overlap? So, okay, I guess so the question that you have, which is a very valid question, so you are probably you are saying that, correct me if I'm wrong, you are saying, okay, if this is F1, and if another radio is too close, yeah, then, to yes, you have to just separate, yes, yes, good question, yeah, you have to make sure in the frequency, there is enough space between them, if it's F1, that's F2, yes, exactly, based on the bandwidth, yeah, right, yeah. So, yeah, I know, I know the bandwidth of my signal, <laughs> And you have to make sure that they are separate. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, yeah, now here is the is demodulation. At the receiver, we call it demodulation. At the transmitter, we modulate our signal by multiplying by cosine and shifting accordingly to the frequency. Now at the receiver, I have to do the demodulation. So demodulation is that how can I get my signal back, my GT back, if I have these, or correspondingly if I have that. Um, any any suggestion? If, if I give you these, I mean, of this signal, which the frequency is like that, so as I said here, I put a filter, I separate them. But I still, what I have is something high frequency. How can I make it to the low frequency? How can I from this, I get that one? Any idea? So I have to shift it, right? So what should I do? Well, this is multiplication before, right? So would it be like the opposite? So uh, before, I multiply by cosine, and I shift it to the left and right. Okay, now I want to shift it back. So how much should I do? So it would be the opposite then, right? Wouldn't it be? Can it be done with like division? Divided by cosine. Possibly. I mean, wouldn't that be the opposite function? Um, no. Oh. Because I dividing is a very complex operation. So would it be multiplication of like something else, like a reciprocal or? What do you want to do? You want to shift, right? You're right. How do we shift? Um, would it be the, is it the F naughts that were the shift before? Yes. So you would do uh, a shift of F naught like back in the opposite uh, direction? Okay. So, good, good approach. See, multiplying by cosine means shift. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I have already shifted once. Now again, I'm going to shift it back. So I <clears> just <throat> multiply it again by another cosine. Mm -hmm. So what happens if I multiply by another cosine, shift the whole thing to the right, and then the whole thing to the left. Okay, the whole thing to the right. <coughs> if I shift this to the right, what do I get? Anyway, help me. Shift the whole thing by an amount of F naught 
to the right. So tell me, where does this go? If I do to F, very good. So this this one, this bump here goes to two F now. Where does this one go? Back to the origin. Back to the origin. Very good. So it's not so much a shift in the opposite direction, it's like continuing to shift again. Yeah, and hold on. We have another shift. That was shift to the right. What happens also we have to shift it to the left. Remember the amount the formula above? Mm -hmm. F minus F naught and plus G of F plus F naught. Shift to the right, shift to the left. Now shifting this to the left goes to Oh, so then you um would it be plus two F naught, uh -huh. I guess? And then another one here. So basically we'll have twice. Oh, and that gives you the... Yes. Yeah. So basically you have twice of that, because if you shift it to the right and left, you have two of them, the same thing. And then you have two F naught and then minus two F naught. Okay, good. And I was only interested in this. Now put a filter low pass filter here now, and you get your signal back. Okay. So this is what happens with the frequency of You multiply by another two sign, and then put a low pass filter. So again, just remember this that um, multiplying by multiplication by cosine is equivalent to shifting the spectrum. Shifting the spectrum the right and left. Y, F, no, amount of F. Right and left. Okay. So now I've shifted once. If I shift it another time, interestingly, I get something back here. So I can now here. So this is my original spectrum from my original signal. It's low frequency. And you multiply by four, modulated it basically by F naught. And then again multiply by another cosine. So you get this and this and this. And then again, as I said, put a lot of okay, So I'm going to continue the math next time on this, but hopefully everybody got the idea. And I think we also upload the homework. Just check the references. <coughs> And let me know if you have any questions. You know, we are getting more and more material.